Hey, welcome to The Commit. This week, we're talking technical interviews. I'm here at Metric Collective with their CTO, Kevin. So, Kevin, you wrote a blog post recently that I read that really kind of came up with a topology of the different kinds of technical questions. Can you tell us kind of what are the different options that interviewers have and the different styles of technical questions? Yeah, so uh, personally, I've probably been to uh, about 40 interviews where I've been the candidate. Mm -hmm. uh, here at Metric, I've interviewed you know, over a couple hundred candidates. Uh, I've seen a whole bunch of different types of questions out there, yeah. uh, and I've experimented with a bunch of my own. Uh, these are on blog posts all over the place. The internet's full of think pieces about this subject. Yeah. But really, I think they all boil down to three main categories when okay. it comes to technical interviews. Mm -hmm. uh, and those three categories are quizzes, experience questions, and hypotheticals. Okay, so let's start with quizzes. So how would you define a quiz question in a technical interview? Okay, so uh, quiz questions typically involve specific questions about specific technologies or general concepts in computer science. Okay. Uh, depending on your level, depending on where you've come from, these questions vary a lot. Uh, we at Metro Collective don't use them too frequently because I think a lot of the time you get into a situation where you either know the answer or you don't. What do you do there, right? So let's assume you're in a scenario, you get asked a kind of technical style quiz question mm -hmm. and I don't know the answer. So well, that's gonna be a pretty bad experience for me. Uh, the most important thing in these technical interviews is to avoid dead air. You don't wanna find yourself in a situation where you're just staring at the table, you know, not talking, not showing progress and getting to an answer. Uh, all you really want to do is, is move the conversation along. So if you're given a concept that you've heard before, but you're not really familiar with, uh, it's a good idea to talk about some of the concepts that you're familiar with that, uh, that are adjacent to that concept. Uh, it might be helpful to ad admit that you don't really know that particular word, but, but you know some other things. Can you ask the interviewer for explanations around the term? Definitely. Uh, it's, it's really important to understand that the interviewers want you to succeed. Right. Ideal outcome for them is you're the perfect candidate, you, you get the job and, and they can go back to coding. Right. Uh, and so the, the, these technical questions, they're not about proving that you don't know how to code. Right. Yeah, I, I think that's something a lot of, at, at least people who haven't done interviews themselves, mm -hmm. uh, they, they might not necessarily know that. And it's really important to understand. It's not an adversarial situation. Absolutely. So these are things that move the conversation along and, and show your general skills as a technologist, as somebody who can learn right. these technologies and ultimately thrive in that role. Excellent. What about the second type of questions? Which was your second category? Uh, so these are experience type questions. Okay, so here you're asking me about things that I've done? Right. Uh, and I differentiate technical experience questions from non-technical experience questions. Okay. Uh, there are other interviews where you might be covering you know, types of projects you've worked on, how much you increased sales, what value you delivered for the business. Uh, in a technical interview, when we ask experience questions, we're generally focusing on a very particular project that you did, and we want to see the overall narrative of that project. When I pick a project to tell you about, if you're asking me about my experiences, should I pick a project where everything went perfectly? Yeah, I, I would avoid that uh, just because it doesn't really show a full breadth as a developer. Okay. Uh, a lot of times interviewers will point blank ask a question, tell me about a project you worked on that failed. Uh, that's because they're trying to drive the answer to that question in that direction. Uh, when you look at a project that had some major failure or some major hurdle along the way, uh, it, it shows a bit of dynamism that really is closer to reality of programming. Things almost never go right the first time. It's a lot of trial and error. And so if you can show me that you've uh, had a little bit of humility in your code, noticed that a solution wasn't quite right, and, and go into details about how you noticed that, yeah. Uh, and then talk about how you fixed it, if you did fix it, or how you would fix it if you had a second chance at it. Great. What do you do? So a lot of the people that watch the commit are kind of coming out of the hackathon world and are maybe kind of at the start of their professional journey. What is some advice to have something great to say? So are hackathon projects like a valid thing to talk about? Yeah, I think hackathon projects are one of the best ways to talk about a project if you don't have any kind of like on the job experience. Uh, that's definitely a situation where you were, you, you were put in a position to build a project from start to finish. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and given the time constraints and, and, and you know, the pizza, 
there, there's a good chance that you hit a bunch of snags along the way. I've uh, never known a hackathon project yeah. to have anything but snags. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so these are great opportunities for you to talk about, you know, how you were super confident in the beginning that this was going to be the solution, and then it turned out that you didn't know how that API worked at all. And right. this is how we ultimately came to, you know, a solution that worked. Uh, we had to make these sacrifices in order to meet the time constraint, and ultimately we came out with a project we were happy with. On the metric tech blog, I talk about ambiguity a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the core concepts in uh, planning for okay. any kind of technical engineering roles. That's great. So our final set of style of questions is hypotheticals. What's a hypothetical? Right. So with hypotheticals, we basically are given some project uh, that might be in more abstract terms, it might be in more concrete terms, but the main thing I'm asking you to do is step through how you would solve it. So these are like the famous terrifying whiteboard coding tests. Yeah, they, they can definitely be on whiteboards. Uh, I've actually found that, that a lot of engineers get nervous when writing vertically on a okay. wall, uh, so we don't really use whiteboards here too often. Mm -hmm. um, but we give people paper, uh, we say you can talk through it if you'd prefer, you know, we're, we're really willing to work with whatever the candidate is most comfortable doing because what I'm trying to do is figure out how you would solve a problem once I actually hire you. Great. What are some like broad tips, and I know that we're in a future episode, we're actually going to break down a question, but what are some broad tips about how to prepare well to deal with a hypothetical? Yeah, so I think the most important thing to do in a hypothetical is to spend the first portion of your solution just reiterating the problem back to the interviewer. Uh, does that buy me time to think? It definitely does. Uh, not only does it buy you time, it also gives you a little bit more uh, experience, you know, just sort of interacting with the various entities in the problem. So what's better, correctness or really good process? Very good process is, is the only thing we care about. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've had interview candidates uh, outright failed to produce answers. Uh, but what they did was they showed me a lot of progress along the way. Okay. Uh, they showed me really, really good problem solving. Uh, they, they proposed a lot of different candidate solutions mm -hmm. and they were able to accurately say, oh, you know what, that doesn't work because of this. Let's try something else or maybe here's some changes we can make to try and get it somewhere better. Those are the ones those that, good that we make offers to. Uh, those are the people who, who get hired. And so that's the best thing you can do. Okay, so let's pause there. And next time, we're going to play Battleship. <laughs>